If you have your Bibles, you can go with me to 1 Peter chapter 4, 7 through 11. It'll be the last time we read this uh, text together. We've read this every week for the last few weeks as we consider what it meant to steward our talents and our resources. Today we will talk about our time. So 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11, I'm going to read this to you and then we'll pray together. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks is one who speaks of oracles of God. Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. And everybody together said, amen. Before I pray, I I do want to say this. Each has received a gift. This morning as we dig into the idea, the subject, the research, if you will, of time. This is a gift we have all received. And we're going to discover this morning, or at least evaluate, how we're using that gift. Let's pray and we'll dive in. Father, you are the greatest of all time. There's none like you. There's never been any like you. And there will never be any like you. You are infinitely better than anything we could experience on this planet. So God, I pray this morning as we spend a few minutes looking at your word, discovering, God, your heart in the text, through the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray that you would wake us up to the truth. God, Lord, that we would see how great a gift time is. Lord, how every breath, Lord, is mercy from your throne room. God, Lord, that you own it all, you have it all, and all glory belongs to you. Help us this morning, Jesus. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear. And our hearts to receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Time is a unique topic. It's something that we don't think about, but we think about, right? I mean, think about this with me for a minute. We don't think that we're thinking about time. We're just always thinking about time, right? I don't wake up saying I got to think about time, but I wake up thinking about what? What? What do you ask somebody all the time? Hey, what? Right? We're always thinking about time. So after spending a great deal of time this week thinking about time, I contend that we are living in the middle of a time crisis because we spend it as if we are rich in it, but most of us have no idea how low the accounts really are. I want to give you some numbers and then we'll dive into some scripture. The average American spends 2.5 hours a day on, guess it, social media. You got it. That's 864 hours a year. That comes out to 36 days of your year spent on social media. The average American works eight days, some many more, or eight hours a day. That's about 2,080 hours a year. It's 86 days of your year spent Working, 24-hour periods. The average American sleeps for 122 days a year. If you add all your time up, they're clearly not parents of young children. (laughs) And then check this out. The average American, and I rounded down on this one, but the average American spends four hours a day in front of a television or Netflix or the news, and that comes out to about 50 days a year spent on television. Now check this out, this is alarming. The average American spends about an hour and 15 minutes a day on a hobby, which comes out to about 15 days. The average American spends 37 minutes a day of intentional quality time with their family. The average Christian in America, according to Crossway Research, which polled 14,000 people people that were professing believers, they said on average, most people spend 10 minutes a day praying and 30 minutes a day reading their Bible. 
I share this because I believe now more than ever we should be challenged to think biblically and carefully about our time and our stewardship of time. It was alarming to me to consider how much time we have and how much time we might be wasting. So I'm going to give you four points. Be really clear about this this morning. I'm going to give you four points and then three more points. So we're going to go one through four and then one through three. Everybody got it? Awesome. Point number one this morning, time belongs to the Lord and not to us. Psalm 139, 16 says, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when yet, when as yet there was none of them. Hear me say this this morning. Our time belongs to the Lord. It's his. He superintends over it, over us and over time. He gifts us the time that we have. And you and I have been given time as a gift. God established it from the very beginning. He set the sun in orbit, the moon in orbit, the planets in orbit. He allowed us to have a measure of time. It belongs to God. And here was what was most alarming to me. As much time as we have been gifted, and I'm so guilty of that, I recognize how little time I spend with him. It all belongs to him. Every moment, every breath, every waking hour belongs to the Lord. I was challenged this week to consider in my own heart, my own life, Of all the time gifted to me, how much do I gift back to him as an offering? Time belongs to the Lord. The second point this morning, if you're taking notes with me, is this. Time is a gift that should be stewarded or or safeguarded. Time is a gift that should be stewarded. There's a great parable in Matthew 25, 14 through 25. And and if you're churched at all, you've heard this many times. But the master comes and he gives his servant, one he gives five talents, one he gives two talents, one he gives one talent. And the, the, the servant that had five talents, he, he hurries about and he, he invests the money, he invests the talents, and he produces a return. The one with two talents, he invests, invests it, he uses it wisely, and he returns to the master a great return. And the one that had very little, he just kind of tucked it away, thinking and knowing the master was a harsh master. When I was reading that parable this week and even thinking about it, I've always thought of the gifts there in terms of financial resources or talents that I should be wielding for the glory of God. But I recognize that this is true of time. That every one of us in this week, some of you in this room, you have been given five. And you will live to be, you know, that 95, 100-year-old person that can say whatever you want to say. And people just be like, well, they're 95. What are you going to do, right? Like some of you are going to have that great gift to be that person. My nanny was that person. She was 87 years old, and she would tell you whatever she wanted to tell you, and everybody would just smile and say, yep. (laughs) Some of you will be given two, and your life won't be quite that long. And some of you, and, and we've experienced this in our lives, the friends that you know that their time will only be like the one, and will want to raise a fist up to heaven and say, God, it was too short. The question is not how much you've been given today. The question will be how are you using that that you've been gifted? Because we've all got time. As long as you're sitting here breathing, taking these things, or just some of that, right? Like, you've got a gift. The gift is time. So are you safeguarding, and I'll ask it to you maybe even this way, how are you using the hours you've been given by your maker? How are you investing them? How how, how are you using them? So time this morning belongs to the Lord. Time is a gift to be safeguarded. Point number three, if you're taking notes, time will not last forever. It should be treated with great humility and discernment. Isn't it true that time passes very, very quickly? Has anybody experienced that? In your life, you blink and and you're like, wait, they were just in kindergarten, now they're like second grade. Or you blink and you're like, they could not talk and now they're arguing with me about homework, right? Like it happens very, very quickly. This is made very, I was made very aware of time and the passing of time this past week. About two or three years ago, um, my friend that cuts my hair, I 
I asked him this question. I said, hey, Derek, um, I said, is my hair starting to thin? He said, oh, TJ, uh, two or three years ago, he said, TJ, you're crazy, man, blah, 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 blah. Well, two haircuts ago, I said, hey, man, is my hair starting to thin? He said, you know, TJ, we all get older. <laughs> and then this last haircut, he said, I asked the same question I always ask. It's kind of a joke now. I was like, hey, man, how's my hair looking? He said, you know, you got a few more grays in your mustache than you used to have, TJ. <laughs> it happens quick, doesn't it? Time passes. It's so fleeting. See, James 4, 13 through 15 says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Have we been treating our time, faith family, with humility and discernment? Or have we been treating it like a limitless account that will never go empty? The Lord, uh, I use this story in the nine o'clock and I want to share it with you because I feel like it brings the weight of the moment for me. The Lord offered me a great grace a few months ago. My grandmother passed away and um, much of who I am today in the faith is because of her and her faith and the way that she prayed and the way that she lived out the gospel she had a great part in raising me and me living with her quite a bit. And uh, two months ago, just over two months ago, she passed away. And the Saturday before she passed away, I had not been able to be with her for a w little while. And, and I had an opportunity to sit with her. And I told Tay, I said, I really feel like I need to go. I said, I just feel like, I said this out loud, I said, I feel like something's going to happen. So I just need to go and sit with her. I just need to be with her. And so I sat with her and I, I just kind of rubbed her hair and I told her I loved her. And I told her how beautiful she was and... Um, she slid me a $50 bill. <laughs> she did. I was like, me, mom, I'm doing all right. She was like, she was like, you take this now. The Lord told me to give it to you. I was like, fair enough. And so I got home from that, that lunch with her and, and that gifted moment. And, and Tay and I started having a conversation about me, And I said, listen, this year, I really want to take her somewhere. So we got to take her somewhere. We got to plan something. We got to spend some time with her. We got, we got to take me, somewhere. Today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year. We'll do so and so. We'll call so and so. We'll text so and so. We'll go have lunch with so and so. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time, then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. He said, TJ, why do, you, why, why do you tell that story to us this morning? Why do you share that with us this morning? Because time will not last forever. So make the phone call. Reconcile the relationship. Call the friend or the neighbor. Call the brother, the sister, the mom, the dad. Offer forgiveness that you're withholding. Time will not last forever. So hold your time and steward it with humility and discernment, knowing that every moment, every second in that account that you're pulling from comes from the heart of God to you to be stewarded. The last point before we get to our next three points is this this morning. So take this down. Time can be a helpful teacher. Psalm 90, 12 says it like this. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. I love the way Reggie Joyner says this, when you see how much time you have left, you tend to do more with the time you have now. Allow time to be a teacher. Time taught me a great lesson. Spending an hour with my grandmother and then her being gone, seeing Jesus face to face seven days later, taught me that time is precious, that time is fleeting. It educated me on how I want to live and spend my time. So let it teach you this morning. And if all these things are true, if we believe this morning, 
that time belongs to God, that it's a gift from him, it will not last forever, and God is using it to teach us something. What then should we do with time? That's the great question, right? What then do I do with my time? I'm going to give you three things really quickly. Three ways you can use your time for the glory of God. And after these three, use it however you want. But I'm going to give you three things from the scripture that I see as a way we can use our time for the glory of God. Ephesians 5, 15 through 16 says it like this. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Point number one of our last three points. Here we go. Invest in your personal relationship with Jesus. You want, a way to, you, you want to be gifted away or think of a way that you can spend your time that cannot be taken from you and will not be wasted? Invest time in your personal relationship with Jesus. Pray, read the word, and share the gospel. There's three ways right there that we can invest our time, time that can't be taken from us, time that can be invested in eternal good. We can invest in prayer, reading the word, and sharing the gospel. And according to the stats we read together earlier, we could all use a little more prayer in our lives. We could all use a little more time in the Word. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So pray. Spend time praying. Romans 15, 4 says this, For whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. You need encouragement. You need hope. You need rest. Spend time in the Word. That time cannot be taken from you. That's an investment into your own spiritual well-being. And the way that you treat others, the way that you live, will be an overflow of this time investment. TJ, I'm, I'm worried, I'm anxious, I'm nervous, I'm short-tempered, I'm unkind, I'm ungrateful, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. Bring it back to the beginning. How much time have you invested in your prayer life, in your time in the Word? How much time have you spent with Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Have you spent time with Jesus? And share your faith. Mark 16, 15 says, And he said to them, Go into all the world, proclaiming the gospel to the whole creation. So on this first point, I'll ask you three simple things. Do you have a time to pray? And I didn't say, do you have time to pray? Notice that. I love the way uh, John Maxwell says it. He said, it, it's not a time management question. It's a priority management question. He said, because we all have time. Just the things that are our greatest priority always seem to get done, don't they? No, no matter if it's the right priority or the wrong priority, our priorities always get done. Do you have a time to pray? Do you have a time in the Word of God where God wants to speak to you? His heartbeat on pen and, pa and, pen and paper and ink right before you. The very heartbeat of God. And do you tell people about your relationship with Him? So the first way today you can use your time for the glory of God that it cannot be taken is that you can invest in your personal relationship with Jesus. The second way, and hear me say this, invest in your first calling. Invest in your first calling. Family, husbands, wives, parents, children, spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers in the room, invest in your family first. We live in a world that we're so busy trying to get to the next tax bracket or we're tr trying to get to the better neighborhood or the better this or the better that or to provide these things. Listen, I promise you, hear me say this this morning, they would much rather have your time than more things. You say, well, TJ, you don't know my 14-year-old. A 14-year-old doesn't know they want your time more than, their, your, than things. But you have to show up anyways. And when they are old, when they are a dad themselves, a mom themselves, they will know the great value of time. Ephesians 5 says, Wives, submit to your husbands 
as the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, and then goes on to say, husbands, love your wife like Christ loves the church, so much so that he laid down his life for her. Husbands and wives don't abandon each other in the hustle and bustle of life. In the middle of the parenting and chasing the kids and dropping them off at practice and getting all their lunches done, like don't abandon your first calling, husband. Don't abandon your first calling, wife. Well, we, we live in a world where, where right now we're looking at like 57% of marriages are ending in divorce. There's a whole host of reasons, but, but so oftentimes the, the husband or the wife can be so involved in their work and the husband or the wife can be so involved in the children that they're busy managing money and managing these little lives. And then when the little lives are gone and there's plenty of money, they don't know what to do with each other. Don't abandon your first calling. Bro, you are called to her. Sister, you are called to him. I told the nine o'clock this, I said this a year and a half ago when, when I moved from being executive pastor to lead pastor, but I promised the church that the, the, this then, and, and I, I make the same promise today as I look at this and I make the promise to my family, I'm always gonna choose them over you. Always. Like Tay's always gonna have my heart before you have my heart. She's always gonna have my time before you have my time. Sometimes she gets the leftovers. I have to write that thing, you know what I mean? but they're always going to win over you, church. Dad, mom, I hope the world around you knows that, that your wife, your husband, your kids are always going to win over whatever else the world has to offer you. I'm not perfect in this area. I need to grow in this area. But man, this week I was shaken with the idea of investing in my first calling. Last point I'm going to make here is from Proverbs 22, 6, and I'm going to give you your last point, and we're going to have a baptism celebrate. You're going to get to go and have some time. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Parents train up a child in the way that they shall go, and when they are old, they will what? Not depart from it. Can't train them if you're not there. I say the same for spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers in the room, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters. Like, we can't gift the next generation the gospel. We can't gift our sons and daughters the gospel. We can't live the gospel in front of our spouses if we are not present. So if you hear me saying anything to you this morning is use your time as a gift. Invest it in your personal relationship with Jesus. Invest it in your family, which is your first calling, and then invest it in the kingdom. So TJ, how do I do that? Disciple someone, plug into a Bible study, come to church regularly, sing together, choir. There's all kinds of things you could do in the kingdom. There's parachurch ministries all around the city that are gospel-centered, Christ-centered, cross-focused that you could partner with. There's so many ways to invest in the kingdom, but hear me say this. Don't run out and invest in the kingdom until you've invested in your relationship with Jesus primarily. Don't sign up to serve here at the church at the expense of your relationship with Jesus. Don't sign up to serve here at our church at the expense of your family. Anchor your time in your relationship with Jesus. Settle your time with your family and then begin to invest in the kingdom. That is the gospel order this morning. And what different culture we would have if we used our time in this way rather than wasted it. I've been convicted this morning <laughs> I've been challenged from the word. I'll say it this way. A senior adult walked up to me in the early service and he said, TJ, you jerked my mind out of its comfort. I've been shook considering time this week. And my prayer for you is that you would be too. That you would evaluate your time and you would use it for the glory of God. I want to pray for you this morning. And then we're going to have uh, Rayleigh is going to come and she's going to be baptized. Her grandfather's going to come and baptize her this morning. And y'all can go ahead and make your way up here. I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to celebrate this baptism. And then we are going to respond together. And during this response, this is what I would love. After the baptism, we celebrate as they're singing this morning. As you respond, would you just maybe be bold enough to say, God, would you, would you take my time from me and use it how you want it? Would you show me the time that I have? So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to celebrate. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for an opportunity to consider time and the opportunity to steward time. 
And God, how that plays into our spiritual life, who we are, how we're growing, how we're investing, who we're investing in. So God, I pray that you allow us to steward it well as a gift, every breath, every second, every moment. And God, this morning as Rayleigh comes to, to tell the world that she loves you and she's going to follow you, Lord, I pray that her baptism would be a spiritual marker. God, of letting the world see on the outside what you've already done on the inside. In Jesus' name.